In this presentation, I will talk about part of the work I've done in Sunday Fintech Forager, which is about interval and order representation, which is also very relevant in robotics um, implementations. For instance, imagine this kind of situation. So we are here in Barcelona and we want to go to, uh, this, to this city more in the south. And imagine also that we don't have GPS or we don't have Google Maps or any other kind of tool which can help us. So it could happen that if we don't know the way and it's the first time we go there, we will fail maybe one time, maybe two, maybe twice, or maybe three times till we reach, we see a signal, a second one, and then we reach our destination. And there we get our reward which is to see there the monuments and also the city. This task involves uh, three different things. Learning, that could happen by trial and error. So first we try to go there, and then we, we are able to actually go there and reach the destination. And it's very possible that next time we already know the way, so it's not necessary to fail that many times. And also it's very important to know the exact order of actions, as well as the interval where they happen. If we uh, look at the, at the biology and how the brain deals with the three different kinds of things, we find that there are studies which, which suggest that the medial temporal lobe, or more in concrete, the, the hippocampus, is involved in bridging discontinuities a long time and also in the representation of behavioral episodes, which could suggest that order and interval of actions are invo uh, involved one area of the brain. But there are also some literature or some recent studies which show that the neural activity of the prefrontal cortex uh, evolves at the sequences of actions or of, movme or of movements are, are learned. And also the cerebellum is part of the motor control, which involves gain and timing of actions. And this different literature will involve two different areas in order and interval of actions. So this would mean that the prefrontal cortex would take care of the order of actions, while the cerebellum will take care of the interval of them. So uh, this suggests two different hypotheses. One which says that order interval of actions is inside one, one area and this will, will implement and will call combined model. And a second hypothesis which says that order and interval of actions are separated in two different areas. And this we will also implement and call the distributed model. What we're going to study here is what are the implications of these two opposing hypotheses. And for doing so, we work in the context of the distributed adaptive control architecture, which was already presented by Paul Bershur and also by Armin and Marty, Marty. And we will, in concrete, focus on the contextual layer and the decision-making protocol, which happens in the architecture. So for our two models, we will work for instance, for the first one, which is the, the, the combined model, we will mainly work in the storage and recall. Mm, and I, I start with this. <laughs> okay. So we mainly focus in the contextual layer of DAC and in the decision-making protocol. So in concrete, for the combined model, we have that order and an interval of actions is stored and recalled from memory. We will see more in detail how this works. And for the distributed model, we have order of actions in the contextual layer, but the interval they have to be executed is calculated or computed in the decision-making mechanism. We will see now it more in detail. For studying these two different models, we have foraging tasks like this one. This is the most, the, the simplest environment we have. So here, this is the robot, which will be randomly placed in one of these three different positions. These are visual cues, or as Armin said in his presentation, CS prototypes, and the target is to reach the light. 
So the robot will start from one of these three different positions, will learn the task, and will reach the, the light. Um, the robot is a, is, has one camera pointing to the floor, and also a proximity sensor and light sensor. So the light is sensed by the robot in, three di in these three patches, but not far away from the light like, in these three different patches. But it will be sensed, but not high enough to, tri to trigger any reactive action. So at the reactive layer, it's not possible to reach the light. So to see more in detail how the contextual layer of DAC works, we have this video here. So as the robot moves in the environment, it is storing every path and action that is performed. So in this case, it's storing the first in the short term memory uh, perception, which is the blue path, together with the action that was executed, that in this case was the go forward action. For the next case, it sees a red patch and it turns to the right. And next, in the next step, it reaches the target. So whenever it reaches the target, this information is stored in the long-term memory, which will be uh, full of different sequences that reach the robot to the target. For the two, two different models, it works like that. For the combined model, as the robot moves through the path, this information and the actions performed in, the, in discretized steps are stored in the short-term memory first and then in the long-term memory. So the memory in the contextual layer will contain different, the different steps that the robot needed to, to go through a path. So in this case, the movements are discrete and the information in, and the memory contains the time information. In the decision making in this case, whenever there is an action proposed by the contextual adaptive or reactive layer, it is filtered by priority. So only one of them is executed and it is executed every time it is proposed. So here we can see that there is a reactive adaptive and contextual action proposed. In this case, only the reactive action is above a threshold, and all the time it is above, above the threshold, it, it is executed there. In the case of the distributed model, what happens is that only one action and one prototype is stored by patch, per patch. So in this case, in the same case as before, when, it goes, when the robot goes through the red patch, only one segment containing the red, the red patch information, it is stored together with the right action, which was performed by the robot. In this case, the information is compressed in memory, and also, as a drawback, there is no time information in memory anymore, because we, on, we, we don't have in memory now the steps that the robot needed to go, to go through the patch. In the decision-making protocol, what happens now is that every time that there is an action proposed but by any of the three layers, it is integrated in time. So they are summed up with different weight, depending on the, on the impact they have in the, we want them to have in the, in the final action. And only when this integration is above a threshold, the action is executed. So normally, a low number of actions are executed with respect to the previous model. <clears throat> we will do the simulation and the experiments with a simulated robot, which, which uh, has the same behavior as a Kepera robot, and in a 3D environment. We will evaluate the, the models in three different environments. The first one is this unambiguous task, which will be mainly a control experiment, where every patch has a different color, so it can already be solved by the adaptive layer. We want to use it to control that the, that the disintegration in time mechanism for the decision making is not having any negative influence in the adaptive layer behavior. And we will also test it in an ambiguous task, which is similar to the previous one, but now we have different color, uh, the same color are the three different, uh, the three last patches. 
So it cannot be solved by the, the adaptive layer because there is ambiguity in the last three patches. So the robot needs contextual information coming from the three first patches. So it is need, the, the contextual layer is needed to solve this kind of task. And as a last experiment, we will, we will test it in a general task where there will be more different ang angles to be learned, so different actions to be learned. The sequence is longer, and what we want to do with this general task is to really um, say that our results can generalize for any kind of environment or number of actions. Moreover, we will also add 5% of noise in the motors to do it more realistic. And we will go from 0 to 10% of noise in the camera in the two last experiments. 